For all your t-shirt needs, check out Tee Public's Killer Selection. Follow the link in the description. Hey, what's up, people? Piz Al here, and today I want to talk to you guys about the new Warner Archive Blu-ray release for Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Now, this is partially going to be a review of the movie as requested in the forum section of my website by Robert Sobel and Devin Dungan 68 as well as a review of this Blu-ray release. And Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 is one of those troubled productions that produced a let's just say messy movie whose Genesis moment <laughs> was um, a movie born of a release date, not a screenplay, not even a pitch, not even an outline as to what the movie will be a release date. Now of that ilk, Leatherface to Texas Chainsaw Massacre three is unique in that on most movies on I don't know, about 99.9% .9 of movies, the director is among the very first, if not the first people who are brought in to lead the movie, to guide the movie from pre-production to post-production and to the release of the film. The director on a film set is pretty much the most important person. Um, in the case of Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, the director was literally the last person they hired. They had written a screenplay, they'd locked the screenplay, they'd cast the movie, they'd location scouted, they'd locked locations, they were building sets. They were prepping the movie literally weeks before the movie started shooting without a director. And when they finally hired Jeff Burr on to direct the movie, the turnaround was literally something like he gets hired on Friday afternoon and the following Monday morning he's shooting the film. Um, those issues are compounded by the fact that Jeff Burr hated the screenplay for Leatherface at Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and he was under a tremendous amount of pressure from the producers because they saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre becoming a franchise uh, much like the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise for New Line Cinema and a new cash, yeah, a new cash cow. Leatherface was going to be their new cash cow at New Line Cinema. He was under so much pressure that he was fired five weeks into shooting the film, uh, a film that was scheduled to be to, to only take six weeks to shoot. He was fired five weeks in to a six week shoot. They couldn't find anybody else to come on and finish the movie. So they actually rehired him. <clears throat> uh, Leatherface of Texas Chainsaw Massacre three also fought a losing battle with the MPAA uh, over getting an R rating for the film. Now, I may be wrong about this. I do believe I read this somewhere long ago that Leatherface the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 had the dubious distinction of being the move of being uh, um, the movie, the movie that had been submitted the most times to the MPAA and rejected for an R rating. They submitted the film literally a million times to the MPAA. They did a million cuts before the MPAA finally gave them an R rating. And if you see that theatrical version of Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, you would think that Leatherface edited the movie with his chainsaw because it is rough. It is very, very rough. It was so rough that Jeff Burr actually wanted his name removed from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. However, the only reel of the film that wasn't excessively cut in order to obtain this R rating was the first reel which contained the credits. So his name <laughs> remained on the film. Um, the movie completely flopped at the box office and it pretty much went into uh, obscurity. 
Now, the plot revolves around this young couple played by Kate Hodge and William Butler. They're traveling through Texas. They make a wrong turn and they they run into the Sawyers. It's kind of a different version of the Sawyer family, a, a new nuclear family for the Sawyer family, the the very patriarchal Sawyer family that we saw in the first two ch- uh, Chainsaw movies has been replaced by a matriarchal family. We have the we have Mother Sawyer who who is at the head of the of this new Sawyer family. We have Tex played by Viggo Mortensen. We have oh uh, goodness I forget um I forget his character's name in the film, but he's got like a hook for a hand. Um, we've got a little girl in the film played by Jennifer Banco, who it's alluded to that she is actually Leatherface's love child, that Leatherface um, romanced one of the Sawyer's victims, and that romance led to... Uh, this little girl's birth. Um, and we also have my favorite character in the film, Alfredo, played by Tom Everett. He has all the best lines in the film. Um, his delivery of those lines is brilliant. Whenever he's on screen, I'm laughing. I- I'm laughing. Regardless of how many times I watch this movie, um, I'm laughing. There's a scene in which he's throwing parts into a little pond disposing of parts because he's kind of like the uh the sawyer family's um janitor kind of he's the cleanup guy and he's talking to the head and he's like we used to have good times didn't we baby we ain't got we don't have good times no more and he's like kissing the thing it's it's he runs a gas station and he sits outside and he's clipping up girly magazines and talking to himself and talking to the girly magazines and if he's on screen i'm laughing i can't help it he's just a brilliant performance from tom everett as alfredo and leatherface the texas chainsaw massacre 3 we've got ken foray thrown in there from dawn of the dead as this survivalist who gets caught up in the whole the whole thing and even though i've always liked leatherface the texas chainsaw massacre 3 This movie screams troubled production. (laughs) There is a a huge hole in this movie. There's just something missing from Leatherface of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. And it's big. It's very, very big. Um, I think some more work put into the screenplay, giving Jeff Burr a little more prep time. Um, As the director of the film could have definitely helped those things. I don't think Leatherface of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 had the potential to be a classic it certainly had the potential to be better than how it turned out, even though I still do like the movie. It's very much a down and dirty, uh, far more akin to the original Chainsaw um, than the sequel. They kind of pretend like the sequel didn't exist in, in Leatherface. Um, it's bloody, kind of gory, but not over the top bloody gory, even the, the unrated version. Um, but they definitely, I think, were shooting for that more raw, visceral, ferocious kind of chainsaw film like the original. However, it all had to be filtered through um, uh, the studio system, for lack of a better word. It had to appease, you know, the suits. Um, I don't know if this movie was 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 uh, had test audiences or not, but... It's like they're trying to make the original Chainsaw Massacre, but make it sort of uh, accessible uh, to a wider audience. Like I said, through the lens, through the filter of a studio. And it just doesn't, it doesn't quite work. Uh, It's a really good looking movie. I think Jeff Burr, it's a complete testament, I think, to Jeff Burr that Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 turned out halfway as good as it did, uh, considering how troubled this production was, considering that he was brought in with no prep time. I mean, literally, he was hired to just call action and cut. That's it. He was just a body. Just make sure the camera's pointed in the right way, in the right direction. Make sure it's in focus. Say action, say cut, and get it done. That was literally his direction as the director of Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, 
and the, again, the fact that this movie turns out half as well as it does um, is kind of shocking, to be honest. It's a really good looking movie. The cast is good uh, all around, uh, but it, 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 it just reeks. This movie screams troubled production. This movie screams, that, you know what I mean, that it was it wasn't easy making this movie. And again, there's a big hole there. There's just something missing from this film that a little bit more time put into the screenplay, a little bit more time put into prepping the film before shooting could have definitely helped. But still, I've always enjoyed Leatherface, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Uh, I know this movie has a big fan base. I know a lot of people were really excited when Warner Archive announced that they were releasing the film on Blu-ray. I was a little trepidatious. Um, <clears throat> Warner Archive does not have a big reputation for, you know, taking these films and giving them, uh, rolling out the red carpet for them. Um, let's just say, as far as new extras, new transfers, etc., etc. And Leatherface of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, it's more or less just an upscaled version of the DVD. Uh, as far as the picture quality and the sound quality are concerned, there's nothing on the back of the Blu-ray indicating that there's been any kind of elaborate transfer or anything to that effect. That having been said, the picture quality is pretty good on this release. The picture is clear. The picture is crisp. The picture is clean. It's already a nice looking film and it looks much nicer on Blu-ray. So as far as the picture quality is concerned, I'd give it a three and a half maybe four out of five. Uh, the audio quality, I'd give a four out of five as well. All of the extras on here have been ported over from the DVD release of the film. Uh, they're all in the, whatever the definition, the standard definition of the DVD uh, was in. Um, fortunately though, all of the extras <laughs> on, on that DVD that have been ported over to this Blu-ray are pretty darn good and they include first up we have the saw is family making leather face it's 27 minutes and 58 seconds in length it includes interviews with director jeff burr writer david scale makeup effects artist greg nicotero producers mark ordesky and robert engelman and actors william butler and r.a maheloff this is a very nice very informative very entertaining making of documentary for Leatherface at Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. They go into detail about a lot of things that I discussed earlier in this uh, video as far as um, uh, Jeff Burr being brought on at the last minute to direct the film, the troubled production, uh, you know, having to submit the film to the MPAA multiple times before they finally got uh, an R rating, the movie flopping at the box office. Um, really, really nice, really informative, really entertaining making of for Leatherface at Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Next up, we have We Knows What to Do With Them Parts. Uh, it's 9 minutes and 45 seconds in length. It includes Jeff Bird discussing the deleted scenes from the film, uh, and then we get to see the deleted scenes from Leatherface at Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Very nice. Uh, we get an alternate ending to the film, which... Um, if you guys have seen Leatherface of Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, you know that at the end of the film, uh, Ken Foray has a little skirmish with Leatherface, let's just say, and uh, the result of that skirmish <clears throat> finds Ken Foray's head being pressed into the blade of the chainsaw and blood flying everywhere, and he appears to be very, very, very much dead. However, at the end of the film, he just pops up with like a tiny little scratch on the side of his head, and he's perfectly fine. The alternate ending, he's dead. Uh, we get a trailer for the film, that classic, awesome, brilliant Excalibur-style <laughs> trailer for Leatherface at Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I think they put more thought into that trailer than they did into just the movie overall, but anyway. Uh, we get a commentary with Jeff Burr, with David Scow, with Greg Nicotero, with Mark Ordesky, with William Butler, and with R.A. Mihailov. Um, It's not the kind of commentary in which they're all in the same room together watching the film and talking about it. Um, it's as if they were separately interviewed or they separately watched the film and discussed it, um, and then they just edit it together. Still, it's a pretty good commentary, I do have to say. Very informative, uh, very entertaining commentary for Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3.
This is a pretty nice Blu-ray release for Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. If you do not own the DVD release for the film that came out several years ago, definitely look into picking up this Blu-ray. You've got pretty good picture quality and sound quality on this release, and you have all the great extras that were on the DVD release ported over onto this Blu-ray. However, if you already own the DVD, you can probably just stick with the dvd now even though this blu-ray is not going to break the bank i think it's going to run you about 18 to 20 bucks depending on where you buy it i definitely see the price of this dvd coming down in the weeks and months to come so you may want to wait until it gets a little more affordable um and i definitely think it will become far more affordable uh in the coming weeks and months uh, if you've got this blu-ray release please let me know your thoughts on it down in the comment section below let me know your thoughts on leatherface the texas chainsaw massacre 3 just overall down in the comments section below if you guys haven't entered my 10k subscriber giveaway in which i'm giving away a 100 amazon gift card the new friday the 13th blu-ray set or your choice of a hand-painted hockey mask or horror shirt from my t public store follow the link in the description head over to my website and enter today if you have a review request that you would like to submit to me if you've got a movie that you want to hear me discuss head over to my website to the forum section and leave that review request there if you're not following me on social media those links are in the description they're also right around here as always thanks so much for watching i really appreciate it take care and until next time peace Join the A Buck A Month Club and help support my channel on Patreon. Thank you to my current patrons, Orc145626, Richard Mead, Robert Sobel, Jeremiah Lambert, B-Movie Mike, Derek Janna, Turi Delamore, and Johnny Yeager. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.